I've looked at a lot of mini PCs in the last couple of years, maybe three years. Been looking at like 10, 15 a year. And you know, in the top five was the Riaton Alloy 9. So when Riaton contacted me and said, hey, would you like to look at the A8? This is another Ryzen 8745 HS based system. I love the CPU because it's got the 780M uh, as far as the GPU, that's the Radeon 780M. So it's fast enough to play a lot of AAA games on, you know, decent settings, 1080p. So we're gonna put this to the test and see how it stacks up. First off, let's go through the specs and then we'll do all the tests on this. So you can see there we have a plastic body on the outside and uh, this one has a big vent on the on the top now you can hear it we'll do the decibel testing in just a minute but it's not quite as quiet as the previous model which had the ryzen 9 7940 hs that i tested you know that one was the alloy 9 that one had a all metal case this one has a plastic outer case but we have some different options here I use OEM keys for a few different reasons. This is the price you're going to pay for Windows 11 Pro if you get a retail key. Let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30, you know, we can do better. Put in TS25, click apply. There we go, $23.22. You got Windows 11 Pro and Home. Same with Windows 10 Pro and Home. We now have LTSC versions. This version of Windows 10 will give you security updates until 2032. And it doesn't come with any bloat or AI nonsense, no copilot, no recall. The same for Windows 11. The LTSC SC editions are volume licenses usually acquired in the same way you would get an OEM key and I made a video on where these keys come from I'll link that below so if you have any qualms about using a volume license key then just grab one of the regular keys I don't they work and so I'm gonna grab one and we have two flavors of office if you're sick of paying that monthly subscription well you can get yourself an offline version of office 2019 or office 2016 let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro all right, I should put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the User Center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press Start, and then type Activate. You'll see Activation Settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here, it says Not Active. Just click on Change Product Key. Paste in our product key and then click on activate. Hey, look at that, active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. 8745HS is eight core, 16 threads. It uh, will turbo up to 4.9 gigahertz. You got 32 gigabytes of DDR5 in this one, 5600. Sports up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. And we have a one terabyte PCI Express Gen 4 M.2 installed. There's a slot for an extra M.2 if you want. You got four displays, four of them and it will support up to 8K with uh, one of the USB 4 ports. You got Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. All right, speaking of ports, let's go ahead and just take a tour, shall we? So on the front, we've got USB 3.2. We got a couple of those. Those are the type A ports. Those are 10 gigabits per second. Then we have uh, type C, USB 4. Then we have audio jack. It's a combo headphone microphone and a power button. On the side there, check that out. That's Oculink. And if you're not familiar with Oculink, well, it is a PCI Express plug, essentially. It's like having a tiny little PCI Express uh, a ribbon extension cable. So you can plug up an external GPU dock or whatever else. It's becoming slightly more popular and I hope to see it on more devices in the future. On the back, you've got your DC power plug. Then beside that, two 2.5 gigabit ethernet parts. Hertz? I turned Irish there for a second. And then we have HDMI 2.0, 4K60 supported there. Display port supports 4K60 as well. And then we have USB 2. We've got a couple of those for your peripheral. So if you're gonna be plugging up multiple monitors, you're gonna have USB type C cables for the video going into the front for the uh, USB 4. And then you'll have your display port and HDMI going into the back. So whatever, if you mount it on the back of your, your screen, because it does have a visa mount that's included in the, you know, in the box, you can just mount it on the back of your screen and have cables going wherever. Who cares? Now let's take a look at the network here. Everybody always wants to know about the network, right? So we have two of the Realtek RTL 8125s. Really like those. And then we got our Wi-Fi 6. It's the AX210 from Intel. All right, so on top of all that, they do offer a one-year uh, warranty with this for all their uh, mini PCs. All right, let's, uh, let's get it naked. Pretty easy to remove just a few screws and then you can take the bottom off. Under there, we've got access to, well, basically everything. We've got our, uh, I guess our heat sink or whatever. We got our thermal pad that's making contact with the M.2 there. Then you can see we also have some crucial memory under the hood. I've been seeing that everywhere lately. So that's there. And then we have our spot to put another M.2 if you want to, up to you. So really easy to open up and, and mess around under the hood. All right, now we're gonna jump in and test it out and see how it runs, play some games and whatever else. All right, Baldur's Gate 3. We're just gonna do straight up 1080p medium. And I'm gonna change TAA over to SMAA because I hate the way TAA looks, just a personal thing. 
We're gonna put a little bit of AMD FSR 2.2 on and then we'll test it out. All right, with AMD FSR, it looks pretty good, especially at 1080p. And we're running up in the 50s. Uh, now when we get into the cities, it might dip down into the 30s, but remember, this is, you know, not a, an action game, so yeah, you'll be just fine. Put some clothes on Carlac for all the Christians. I'll also try it on medium with the uh, upscaling off for those of you who want those crispy visuals. It's crispier, 20 FPS lower. So, yeah. All right, feels pretty good. And you can see here on our medium setting there with FSR 2.2 turned on, we get 47.6 and a 1% low of 20. The minimum is 38.9. Now, when you turn off the FSR and just use SMAA, 30.2. So, you're probably going to have to run this. If you want it on medium, uh, you have to run it with FSR, or you can run it on low without it. Take your pick. All right, Cyberpunk, I'll do a couple tests here. Motion blur off, but otherwise we are on everything medium. So there we go. Fly, and we're going to run the benchmark. All right, so medium, 44.54 FPS, looking pretty good. We also had FSR turned on us. So let's go back and just try, let's go back and just try the low setting and see how that runs, because low still looks really good on this game. See, look at that. Still got fog, still got everything. This is what happens when you focus on art direction rather than throwing every ridiculous effect into a game. You get something that looks good on low and really good on high. So if you're going to be aiming your gun a lot, you might want to play it on low. 50.73 FPS. You saw how good it looked. Also, we had the FSR turned on, of course. Minimum, 43.69. Looking pretty good. Before we get into all the other games, let's recommend something that runs really well on this. This is the Carters 2. It's very similar to a lot of the other cart games out there with overall... Uh, wearing plumbers. One of the things that's interesting, if you look at the tracks, see we've got Island, Western, different themes. But if we come over here, we've got Custom. And these are tracks that I have downloaded. So you might notice that some of these are from things that you've seen before. People are remaking tracks. There's a pretty big community right now. And they're just making tracks, making different uh, carts, making whatever. Just different stuff for this. So that's kind of cool. We, we actually have mods. It'd be really cool if Mario Kart had mods like this, but it doesn't, and we've got this game. So when you jump, you have to wait until you land before you press your direction to slide. So jump, and then I can slide. But if you hold down the direction before you do that, it can kind of go wonky. I'm talking and not paying attention. Ah! You, you see, you even got tricks when you do jumps and stuff. This cart is a little bit wild compared to the other ones. You get used to it, not, you know, pressing the direction exactly until you land. But yeah, it feels a little bit floatier than Mario Kart, but it still feels really good. It's one of the best kart games that I've played that's not made by Nintendo. So yeah, if you're looking for something that has some cool mods, some just fun, goofy gameplay, it's actually quite a bit more difficult than Mario Kart. It doesn't have quite the rubber banding. I'm really having a lot of fun with the Carters too. So if this is your kind of game, you like these Carter games? Check it out. I forgot what my shoot is. I have to remap my buttons, which you can do. Let's see. There we go. Shoot. The other thing that's a little bit confusing is some of the tracks I've noticed, the way they're designed. All right, so it's interesting. When I compare this to the Minix I tested last week, um, not only is it louder, it's actually a little bit slower in Valley, even though it was a little bit faster in Cinebench. Kind of strange. So we got 69.9 for the FPS. The Minix scored 73.6. Again, same CPU, GPU, similar RAM configuration. Score of 29.23, the Minix scored 30.79. Minimum FPS 35.1 and the Minix was 39.8. So it's interesting that it's a little bit uh, slower than that one in this test. Let's keep on going here and see what it's like with Superposition. All right, in Superposition, we got a score of 50.29 with an average FPS of 37.62, minimum 31.29. The Minix was 52.33, with an average of 39.15 and a minimum of 33.08. So a couple FPS difference. I'm not sure why the score is so different, but yeah, just a couple FPS difference right there. This has been running for a very long time, almost an hour now, 52 minutes, just stressing this CPU to see what we can do. No overheating whatsoever. Um, it maxed out at 88.6. I don't worry about the CPU until we get above 95. So this is all fine. This is like standard stuff. I would expect it to be maybe a, a little bit cooler, but I think it does get warmer when you put it in laptops. So this is all within the realm of what I expected. 
and I like the fact that we're not overheating, so that's good. You can really hear this because it's high pitched and has like a whistle like a jet turbine. My room's a little bit loud, but uh, yeah, this is just the room tone right now in my room without measuring anything, just 44.3. I'm gonna put this up, you know, kind of close to the machine and we'll see how loud it is. All right, so when you get close to the machine, yes, it's loud. These are louder than I expected. I'm gonna go into the BIOS and see if we can tone this down because it's uh, louder than a lot of the machines I've tested. I mean, it's not insane, but you know, you can hear it for sure. And it's kind of whiny and annoying. Okay, let's have a look at Cinebench. And I already know the CPU is fast, but yeah, it's really fast. 1734 on the single core, the multi-core. Well, we got 16352. You can see there where it stacks up in between the previous generation Threadripper. Isn't that insane that like, yes, that's an older Threadripper, but that's 16 cores, 32 threads. And now we have eight cores, 16 threads, but the single core, the IPC uh, is so high that it's actually faster than the old Threadripper. So it's kind of insane to see a CPU this small that's that fast. In Geekbench, our single core score is 2573 and the multi-core is 12950. I'll scroll down so you can compare all the individual test scores down here. There we go. And then the OpenCL score is 29,532. Again, there's the individual test scores if you're keeping score. Hey, um, what on earth? So during the write, we got a little bit spicy right over here. Uh, I guess it's not naked, so it's a little bit hot. Um, the idle temperature on this seems uh, pretty hot as well. So yeah, it's fast. This is faster than I expected. Um, you know, I guess I thought I was working with a different Kingston. So this is a very fast Kingston drive. 6106 on the read, 5335 on the right. Let's look at the IOPS and yes, 150 almost over here. And then almost 120, which I'm rounding up right now just to save time. So really good on the random 4K IOPS, but uh, that temperature, it's like, yeah, it's spiked up a little bit. It's getting pretty hot. As long as it doesn't stay like that if you're not doing sustained writes for a long time. But uh, I'm gonna keep this up and monitor it while I'm doing stuff here and just see what it does. I just stayed low while I was transferring files. It was a pretty slow transfer speed. Also, I noticed that uh, transfer on my main computer pretty much held a consistent, you know, above 200 megabytes a second there. This one went, started off at like 200, 220 megabytes a second and then dropped down quite a bit. Transferring the same stuff. I'm just transferring some footage over here so we can try out Premiere. So I don't know. Anyway, let's go ahead and test out Premiere. I don't care. Can't wait to try out this hateful new interface. Here's all the footage from what I just shot. And uh, scrubbing around is fast. Playing is fast. Everything's fast over here as well. That's whatever. Put it up to full. Nobody should ever do this because this tiny little window is not 4K. You shouldn't be playing 4K right over here. Yeah, it's fine. It's It feels totally fine. I'll do a cross dissolve quickly. There we go. Nice long cross dissolve. And we'll see how this looks. It's flawless. So yeah, this thing can edit 4K video just fine. All right. So um, while I do not like this as much as the Alloy 9, for a number of different reasons, the primary reason being that it's just a little bit louder. It's not the loudest I've ever heard, but it's not the quietest I've ever heard, and I do like a really quiet machine. So it just depends on what you're doing. For most gaming scenarios, it's not incredibly loud if you're doing 100% like rendering or something and you're just taxing the GPU and the CPU all day long, then you're going to hear those fans. Otherwise, I think Riotun has crammed this full of everything you need and then extra. So yeah, you know, with the Oculink, something like this can totally be a desktop replacement. By itself, it's already faster than like the Steam Deck. You know, like it's very similar as far as the components go, whatever, but it's faster. It's got USB 4, which Steam Deck doesn't have. I'm kind of comparing it because I've been using that a lot lately. You know, plugging this up to a regular GPU with the Oculink, now you're 4K gaming on whatever you want. I don't 4K game, but you can if you want to. Anyway, there you have it. The Riotan A8, another good mini PC from Riotan. And I hope they keep on making cool stuff. But hey, Riotan, give me another Ryzen 9 uh, or one of them Ryzen AI Max, whatever the nonsense name is, 370 things. Give me one of those in that really nice metal case like this one right here. Let me show you. Yeah, I love this case. Probably gets a little warmer. I don't know. But yeah, I, I love this case. Doesn't have as many options as the case we have now, but I just, I don't know. I'm, I guess I got attached to that one because I used it a bunch for Fedora. That was my Fedora rig for a while. Anyway. 
Remember to head over to epicpants.com to get all those, all that stuff. Just, I didn't set my clock. <laughs>